Welcome back, everyone. I'm Justin with Is It Scary Wisconsin. I am joined here tonight by one of my best friends, Gage. And tonight we are here for a review of the Burial Chamber Haunted Attraction Complex in Nina, Wisconsin. Hi, Gage. Hello. So we called a bit of an audible with our schedule recently, uh, and we were able to slip uh slip the burial chamber into the hot schedule this year which was nice it's really weird usually you just see like a green bay theater video terror in the fox video realm revenge, revenge yeah in the very first then, weekend but like burial chamber yeah what? yeah and then we go to a few off the wall haunts and that's it so yeah we had a chance to go down to burial chamber uh it's a multi-attraction complex and we're gonna get into kind of discussing that a little bit more towards the end of the video but for right now, we're going to go over, as you guys know, if you've been following us, reviews are now based on general scores and scare scores, taking 40 points from my review, 40 points from Gage's review, and then 20 points combined between the two of us possible for kind of personal opinions at the end. And we get a score out of 100, and then we just kind of uh, STS afterwards. We shoot the shit a little bit, have a discussion, and... Uh, we're gonna get right into it today. We're not gonna we're not gonna belabor it at all. Uh, you ready for this, Gage? Let's do it. All yep. right. So general first. Here we go. Is there a website? Yes. Does it present good information? Yes. Is parking available on site? Yes. Is it clearly labeled? Yes. Is there a clearly labeled attended ticket booth and does it have prices and rules? Yes. Or rules stated someplace else during the haunt. I noticed that they do that too. So I'm, I'm also willing to count that there as well. Uh, clear queue lines, yes. Attractions clearly marked, yes. Atmospheric music and audio selections, yes. Actor staying in character, yes. Haunt fully well staffed for the most part. Clear directions through and after the haunts were over, yes. Lighting used appropriate, yes. Were there any unusual scents? Yes. Mm -hmm. did, you catch another, did you catch another group? No. Was the scenery appropriate? Yes. Did the haunt maintain immersion? Yes. Was the walking path safe and well maintained? Yes. Did the haunt feel appropriately priced? Yes. Did the haunt have a good atmosphere? Yes. 39 out of 40 points. For scares. Did, the act did actors attempt to scare you? Yes. Were masks used of good quality? Yes. Did props seem real and scary? Yes. Were the haunt were the actors in the correct positions to enhance the scares? Yes. Were there a variety of monsters slash haunters in sight? It wasn't all pretty much. Were the all the actors were they did they fit the theme? And then I put yes. Did the actors in the scare did the actors in any scenes scare you twice? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, morning crud in my throat. Did any sc scenes with actors and props scare you three times? Now here. I did do one point. Uh, there was it once, but I feel like when you have three different 15 to 20 minute haunts, there should be a couple of them. There should be a couple, three, three actor prop scares. Did any actor from scare from below the waist and above the waist? Yes and yes. Was there more than a jump scares in the haunt? Yes. Was there a go home scare? Yes. Were scares in the same, were same as last year? I gave him a four. I came back there for uh, Blackout Night last year, and uh, it seems like they really changed up Adrenaline. Phobia, I don't quite remember all that well, but and Sandy, it seems like they didn't change much. But still, I feel like four points is fair. Um, did actors seem well-trained and enthusiastic? Yes. Were all props, animatronics, and devices in working order? Yes. Were there any unique scares? Yes. Did anyone scream, get out? I'm going to give him a minus one on this one. Usually he's normally a minus two. Uh, you and I were talking about this. There were a few lines of fresh meat and get out. You're going to touch on it later, so I don't need to dwell on it right now. Uh, did any sounds used to enhance the scares? Yes. So out of all those combined points, we came to a 37 out of 40. Yeah. Ruby came to say hi. That puts us oh, at each. a so that puts us at a standing score of seventy six. Mm -hmm. So that puts us at a seventy six before we uh, 
before we get before we get anywhere else, before we get into any personal scores mm -hmm. or any personal points. So that's actually a relatively good base score to be at. That's really solid. It is. It was a really um, good one. That this haunt. Before we before we get into the personal stuff, I know some of the actors will see this. Uh, before we get into like some of the personal points, I do want to say this. One thing this haunt gets right is a lot of the general basic haunt stuff that it still surprises me so many haunts don't get right. Mm -hmm. Like they have their actual prices right up front. And I don't know why more haunts aren't doing that. I don't know why... Two of the three haunts we've been to now already this year don't display ticket prices. That makes no sense to me. I don't understand that. Um, so they do have their prices clearly labeled. Uh, they, I mean, the, the queue lines, really, the. I feel like this is just, especially when you have multiple attractions, right? The queue lines, marking them properly, general admission, quick pass, general admission, quick pass. Like, I feel like that's day one stuff. You know what I mean? Like, this is not stuff that haunts should be struggling with after they've been around as long as Burial Chamber has. And it's nice to see, obviously, that they're not struggling with it. You know? Um, so they do get a lot of the amenities things right. This was also the first haunt we've been through this year. And this is our fourth haunt now we've been to that actually had some unusual scents and smells. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a couple of rooms we went into and even people were like, oh, it smells like piss in here. You know, like you see the customers reacting to that, right? And that was really good. And I still don't understand why more haunts don't enhance some of their rooms with smells. It's one of the senses that is really easy to mess with people on. And I see very few haunted attractions in the Wisconsin area taking advantage of that. Um, what else do I even want to talk about right now? Just just kind of go looking over at my at my general list of things here. It was nice to when I walked through Right, and I was looking at all these, thinking of all these different points that I was going to be touching on in the review today. I was like, man, these guys are really killing it as far as the general aspect of haunting goes, right? Agreed. Right? Personally, personally, I feel like every haunt needs to score an 80 out of 80 when we do this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Scoring a 76, 77, 78, 79. I mean, those are, that's good marks, right? But I feel like the stuff we're talking about here is general haunting stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now somebody might come on here and say, well, you've never worked in the haunt industry. What do you know? I've been to enough haunted houses to know. I've listened to enough haunt owners talk to know. Um, so instead of giving the full five points for fully and well-staffed, I gave it four I felt there were a few areas in some of the haunts that were just dead space. I don't mean like the awesome video game. I mean dead space in general. And where nothing was being done with them. And it was basically just extra walking with nothing to care about. You know, it's just like, oh, I'm just going to walk through this turn. Oh, here's this turn. Oh, here's this turn. Oh, here's this turn. You know, there could have been an actor there. So I felt like that was a little weak in some areas but for the most part the attractions were well staffed and that was really solid on this night uh any any general thoughts that you want to give gage before we talk about personal points <clears throat> um general thoughts if no, uh, if no then we can go right into personal that's fine no no i, I have a, i have one um burial chamber it kind of suffers from the fact that you are always going in these Congo lines, and it really takes out the immersion. I, I believe this is the same thing we harped about when we went there a couple of years ago. Now, of course, they're really never going to change this, and I understand that. 
um, uh, because they get a lot of people coming through, and it is a long hop. So you don't want to keep sending groups of two, three people into a hop that's about 15 to 20 minutes, especially when you got someone that slow, because you're always going to run into someone. So it seems like regardless, you will be in a Congo line, whether you get put in one or whether you catch up to one. Um, uh, so I just I want to make a note of that. It really does kind of take out of the immersion. I feel like if we get all this going there, if any groups can go... Oh, there's Lyle. Lyle's peeking. <laughs> People are probably like, what the hell is he saying? Um, yeah, it just... I don't know if I want to take away points necessarily. Add any points. I don't think I really should add any points to that. It's just something I want to note. Uh, so it's just something I thought about. I'm ready to move on to the personal points. Cool. Let's do it. I'll, t I'll go first, and then you can go after that. Sure. Uh... I'm giving a point here. Burial Chamber has a fun atmosphere and feels like the kind of haunted attraction that my group could easily spend three hours at having fun mm -hmm. if I didn't have anything else going on. You know what I mean? I think we were there for maybe an hour and 15, hour and 20, and we were kind of, we were beasting it on Quick Pass. But if I had a group of friends I was going down there with and I didn't have any other thing going on in my life and I was just and I was the day off the next and day. And I had the next day off and I was going out for a Saturday night, you could easily spend three hours at uh burial chamber having a good time. They've got food, they've got drink, they've got a music got a concession stand, they've got music, they've got really good Q line actors, and, and the haunts for the most part are decent. So I feel like that's a place you can go spend an evening. And to be fair, haunts like this are built so you come and stay the evening. Going to the haunts, going to the gift shop, going and getting food. They're built like this on purpose. This is business, right? Meanwhile, here's us going to Braille Chamber and Spooks on Spur that same night. <laughs> but my, my point is, right, my point <clears throat> is, though, right, this is, this is business, right? This is, it's set up to be run like a business. And as mm -hmm. a businessman myself, I can appreciate that and I can see that and I really, really like that. This is the place where if you have a group of friends, five, six, seven, eight, four, whatever of you, go wanting to go to a haunted attraction, it's a good place to go. It's not necessarily cheap. You know, it's not necessarily a one and done kind of thing, but you can spend the entire evening there and you can have a really good experience. Yeah. I know everybody watching this thought I was just going to dump on burial chamber this whole time. I actually have some really good, some really good stuff to say tonight because I did as tired as I was and as irritated as I was. And you can attest to this. I did enjoy my experience last night. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is the first haunt we've been to that really injected some off the wall smells into the mix. We noticed this. I'm giving an additional point for smells. Even though I gave them a point in general, I'm actually giving them another one because it was so refreshing to finally go through a haunted attraction and go, wait a minute, this is, is that weird. Piss? This, the, yeah, is that piss? Yeah, is that piss? Is that piss? Well, because we're you're Please like, tell me it's piss. Well, you like you like turned around, you're like, Justin, smells, smells, and I'm like, oh, yep, yep, yep. Mm. Yep, I found out the hard way. But my but my point is though, right? It's so it hits you when I when I talk about the senses, right? It hits you so differently at the time when it's happening that you're like, oh, oh, so, it. it it's why do a, I want this to happen? <laughs> it is a it is a sen it is a sense that is very rarely. From what we've seen, it is a sense that is very rarely affected in haunted houses. So when you see that happen, when you go through and that happens, it's like, I really noticed this. I really, I'm paying special attention to this because of the fact that the haunt I was in last weekend smelled like Febreze. Just saying. Line actors and Q-Line Entertainment were on point and welcoming. Now, this was really solid. I liked the way everything from the military guy to the Bane knockoff guy uh, to even some of the other characters that were kind of roaming by phobia to uh, some of the ladies that were walking, like the Dark Priestess with the staff. I have to tell you guys, 
The Q-Line Entertainment here at Burial Chamber, I'm going to compare it to another haunt for a moment, is on par with the quality of the Q-Line Entertainment at Terror on the Fox. And if you guys watched that video this year, you will know I said it was some of their best work ever for Q-Line Entertainment. I really enjoyed watching the Q-Line actors work. I didn't stand in queue lines very long for most of them to come up and get us, though we did have a chance to meet up with my heartthrob, Ethel. I didn't have a chance to actually interact with them all personally. My heartthrob, but okay. But I did, I did get to watch them interacting with other customers, and it was really impressive to see how they did it. I liked it a lot, and I'm giving an extra point for it. Another area I'm giving an extra point is the actor that was outside of Phobia on Saturday the 5th. He had a nice voice changer and was using some video game lines. Uh, I'm Gage, again for one. Uh, stop, you've broken stop, the you law. Vi you violated the law. <laughs> I, I can appreciate this as somebody who enjoys a nice Easter egg in my character interactions. I like that. And... This person, I watched the way they were interacting with the customers. Not only did they interact really well with us adults, right? 37, 27, right? Older adults, middle-aged adults. But they interacted really well with the teenagers and the younger people that were there. And they kept it, not only did they keep it appropriate... But they also weren't afraid to say, if you violate any of my rules, we're going to drag you out of here in meat hooks. Like, I liked it. It was good. The interactions were good. And the video game Easter eggs were a nice touch. Extra point. Actors scared from above and below, not just in front. There was a really good variety of actor and animatronic interactions at Burial Chamber. Whether it was the train, the grinders, or again, people coming from above or below. I really liked this. And one thing that I noticed that Burial Chamber does, they do the little plastic snakes on the ground. I like that. And I can appreciate, as somebody who's looking for a multitude of different scares, I can appreciate them doing that. So I gave an extra point for that from my personal score. Also, one more thing I wanted to talk about. Attraction management. That means the people running these attractions and bringing people into these attractions, not only do you have to be good at working with people, but sometimes you have to get down and dirty and you have to tell them, hey, quit screwing around. During one of the attractions, one of the workers had to ask a customer to turn their flashlight off. I appreciated that as somebody who was annoyed as hell by this other person. I paid $75 to go through these attractions. You do not have a right to turn your cell phone light on during an attraction and ruin it for me. Just like I don't have the right to ruin it for you. I appreciated that the event manager said something and rectified this or attempted to. However, they didn't dwell on it and threaten to kick them out. They said something and that was it. They moved on. And even after the event was over, they thanked everybody for coming. That's good management. I gave a point for that. I really, really liked it. So all in all, I gave one, two, three, four, five, six additional points, taking them currently to an 82 However, 82. however, since we're talking about extra points right now, I am going to give one modification. And I'll mention this again when I talk about negatives and positives. 
two actors, at least, during the night when we were there, used the phrases, get out and fresh meat. These are haunt actor no-nos. Do not do this. Get out, I'm going to, believe it or not, let slide, because it was part of a conversation. It wasn't us walking to the room and them going, get out! You know, it wasn't like that. It was part of a sentence, part of a conversation. I'm going to let it go. We, we decided we were going to let it slide on this one. However, we also had another interaction with another actor that said, fresh meat. One of the laziest lines in haunt acting. No reason to be using that. Get other lines. Get better lines. You can do it. I know you can. So I am taking one point off. I'm taking one of my points away for that putting their current score sitting at an 81. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Gage. <clears throat> For my bonus points, I wish I could show you me putting down each tally mark saying, hey, look, I'm putting this point down. But I can't because I'm not over there. But, I, you know. Anyways, we're starting off with actor intensity and atmosphere. It's a point that I gave. Now, at... Burial Chamber does something right when it comes to the atmosphere. Uh, it's pretty much a little sprinkle over top of what you just said. You know, you can easily spend a whole evening there. Uh, they got all the fun music, food, line entertainment. It just seems like it's the place to go to just hang out and spend an evening. So the atmosphere and overall actor intensity, not only outside, but inside the haunt, it does go hard. Like, it's... It, it's crazy with how much it feels like you can't really get a breath in between any haunt, me, any room and such. But then at some point, you know, you would find those occasional dead rooms that would give you that brief reprieve. Um, but I just, I feel like this house, this haunt, really hits the nail of the hammer, that one. So I'm giving an extra point for that actor intensity atmosphere. I want to also give uniqueness. Uh, is that even a word? Is uniqueness a word? <laughs> it came out of my mouth, so it is officially a word. You're welcome, the English Dictionary. Uh, I'm giving a point for that. And they have so many unique props and animatronics, as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, smells. It's all unique. With the different kind of animatronics that would run after you, uh, that would kind of freak you out, get at you at your ankles, or get you from above, as well as the actors and the unique interactions uh, when it comes to different rooms and different props that they may have, like the one guy throwing something at, at you and it comes right back. I thought that was really cute. I like that. Uh, so I give a bonus point for that. Uh, my other bonus point is Haunt Duration. Now... This might be because they got those few little walking path areas where it's like, oh hey, here's an extra thirty second. Uh, thirty seconds is kind of thirty seconds is kind of rough. Uh, but regardless, the hot duration is. I always enjoy that because you don't necessarily feel like you're getting your bang for your buck. Uh, since they increased the price, not, didn't they increase the price a couple of years ago, Justin? I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter? Okay. Regardless, the haunt duration is something that I do like. I do like to know that, hey, I'm going to go here and we're going to spend some time here. So I gave an extra point for that because I don't really see many haunts going with multiple attractions 15 to 20 minutes long. Ex besides, you know, obviously their sister location, abandoned. We don't go down there that much. It's kind of a drive. Um, my next point that I gave is padding. This is such an underrated thing. I wish more haunts had this. Padding, and what I mean by that is when you're ducking, swerving, moving around all these little tight spaces you shimmy around, there is at least carpet. Carpet on like a corner, a sharp corner where there would just be plain wood. They put carpet there. Something to, you know, not hit your head on. And how, Justin, how, it, it must have been annoying for you to go through that haunt. And I'm like, Justin, Justin, look. There's padding. There's padding. <laughs> it's like, yes, Gage, I see it. Well, I actually, I actually said to one of the actors or actresses when I was going through, I said, I know they were in character and everything. I said, I really like that you guys 
pad these edges. I said, thank you. You know, and I was just like, I just like, I'd rather see you split your head open, you know? And I'm like, okay, great actor interaction. That was really good, you know? But mm -hmm. I, it is as a taller person, it is something I appreciate. And it is something that I'm sure a lot of their customers appreciate as well. And my last point that I want to give is my fifth point. I want to add that actors really stayed in character. Now, I know obviously that's a, a must for every haunt, but when you have three different haunts that can range from 15 to 20 minutes, it's going to happen. It at least should happen. You think statistically there should be someone to break their their character. They didn't. Not that I caught. Did you catch any? I'm always watching for it. So, with that being said, actors really stayed in character. You would think at some point someone broke, but they didn't. So, I'm going to... My additional points, personal score, was an additional five points. Uh, so where does that put us? You said we were at 80-something? That puts the haunt at 86 for a total score, so that puts them at a good haunt. They got six points from me, minus one for saying fresh meat and sort of saying get out, even though they really didn't. And it gives uh, plus five from you. So it's five from me total, five from you, 10 points, 76 and 10 is 86. Overall rating, good haunt. I like it. I like it a lot. You know, there's something we missed in our last video. What do we miss? What's our... MBA. What's our MBA? Yeah, we, we totally brushed over that. <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing, right? I want to talk, before we get into MBAs, I want to talk a little bit about uh, sure. the real chamber. Uh, like we said, one actor did dance the line of saying get out, which is unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. I uh, also had another actor say fresh meat, so we did take a point off for that. But for the most part, the rest of the actors and actresses were right on point with their lines and what they were saying as characters. It was really solid, and the work there was really good. At times, I did feel like certain rooms were missing an actor, and it just became a walking simulator. So, I would like to ask a question. What is it with these actors with these little squeaker toys? Like squeaky, 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 squeaky. What is it with that? Those aren't scary. They're not. And I don't know what, if it's like they're the point Must of it is. silly. I don't know if the point of it is to be like, where is that coming from? Who's doing that? Or if the point of it is like to catch you off guard with it in your ear or something. But they've had this at Burial Chamber. They've had these kind of things at Burial Chamber ever since I've been going there. And I don't understand the reason for it. Because it's not scary. It doesn't enhance a scare. Personally, I think it's dumb. And there's way better actor tools that we could be using to try and actually elicit a scare. Which... Like I say in every one of my reviews, is the primary goal of every single haunted attraction is to scare and then to entertain the customer. But the first thing you should be trying to do is scare the customer. So it did feel like we had some quite limp interactions with some actors that were just squeaking these little squeakers. Um, there's way better things we could be doing there. That needs work. Long conga lines kill the scares for some haunt goers. But you guys already know that. Conga lines has been my biggest issue with Burial Chamber since I've been going there. It, I don't know if there's a way to rectify this. But rectifying that will be what takes Burial Chamber from being a good haunt to a great or excellent haunt very, very quickly. Um, when we walked through Phobia, we missed a lot of actor interactions and scares. It was basically just a long mm, walk through I'm the woods. I'm glad you brought that up. It was basically just a 20-minute or 15-minute walk through the woods. Um 
as most of the actors basically targeted the back of the line. I get it, right? I understand. Show yourself at the front of the line, now everybody knows you're there. Show yourself at the back of the line, nobody knew you were there, right? Except for guys like me who are looking in the peripheral and see you hiding behind the barricade. But I understand why they do it. However, as a customer who paid $75 for his ticket, I still want to be scared. I still want to be targeted. And for the most part, what was the last one we went through, Gage? Uh, insanity. For the most part, for I would say 80% of insanity, and I would say 90% of phobia, we had slim to few actor interactions. And we're referring to like people jumping out, scaring you, right? Yeah, yeah. And actually, you know, doing what they're supposed to be doing in a haunted house. The, uh, the, if you're going to do conga lines, it, the scare has to be better. The scare effort has to be a little bit better in that remarks. Would you say they need scare, to go ah, and then hide back scare, and get back and rehide scare? You got it. You've got to find a way to do that. And I understand again, I understand that that can be difficult. That is your job. Uh, so that the conga lines things disappoints me. Uh, this was my girlfriend's first time ever going there. And one of the comments she made, uh, we went through, we went through the first one. What was the first one? Adrenaline. Adrenaline? Mm -hmm. We went through adrenaline. She enjoyed adrenaline. She said it was good. And then she also enjoyed trapped. She said that was a lot of fun. And when we walked through phobia and when we went through the last haunt, she made the comment to me, those last two just kind of felt like we were walking. She's not a haunt reviewer. She she doesn't she has no skin in the game. She I paid for her ticket. She she had no, you know, she had, you know, no investment in this. She's like it just kind of felt like we were walking for 15 minutes. She's like some of the stuff was cool, like some of the set pieces were cool and stuff, but for the most part it just felt like we were walking. Most of the scares missed us. That was really disappointing. Again, that's coming from a general customer with no skin in the game. I also heard a lot of the late teenage customers walking out of some of the attractions echoing kind of what we were thinking. That was mid. Again, it wasn't bad. Right? Right, Gage? Mm -hmm. Or am I wrong here? I never said it was terrible coming and out of that haunt. It wasn't bad. Point. In fact, I had more fun than I thought I was going to. I've been in, insanely critical of Burial Chamber in the past. Go back and watch my old videos. I've been insanely critical of these guys. But the younger people who it feels like this haunt is geared towards scaring and entertaining are walking out saying, that was really mid, bro. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was kind of mid. I, that didn't really get me as much as I thought they were going to. Yeah. And I didn't just hear it from like one dude trying to act tough to impress his girlfriend. I heard it from a lot of people. That was mid, bro. Might be something to consider working on. Uh, finding a way to up some of those scares. Or finding a way to up some of those interactions. All right, let's talk about some positive things. Every actor that we encountered, for the most can, part... Can I say something quick before you yeah, move on? I yeah, apologize. No, um, no, no, go ahead, dude. This is no, when you cool. were... When you brought the fact that being... That they just kept scaring everyone behind us. I do remember going through phobia. <laughs> and as we're going through You were it, like, scare me! Scare like, me! You should scare me! What are you doing? Like, You're I, begging I, for it. Where are you going? Come here and scare me. <laughs> yeah. But it's, I don't know if how many times, because I'm in front, I've, I've led in, 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 a, in, a, in adrenaline, 
and I've lied in Phobia. Both of which I've walked by an actor's, I made eye contact with an actor, <laughs> and I'm like, all right. <laughs> I, I see I'm not the I'm I'm not the I'm not the target here. So I, you're I not the continue. target market. No, you're not. Um and I get it. I get it. You know, I'm not I'm you know, I'm a grown man leading a line. You want to scare whoever else is in there because you can hear all the kids behind us. So yeah, yeah. But, so, but, but 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 I spent money. You paid seventy five dollars to be scared. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it's I, it's not like it was completely stale. I've had a rare few, but I can't tell you how many times, like, in Phobia, I walked through a shack area. I didn't hear anything. And I hear, bah! And I'm like, I'll just move on to the next one, I guess. <laughs> Considering and, I scared the six kids behind me. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. If you want to enjoy Burial Chamber, don't be in front. You, you you won't like it. Just if you're because you're always gonna be these put these congo lines. Try to be in that middle. That's where you're gonna get the meat of your sandwich. So we can continue. Every actor we encountered, for the most part, was in character and on point. These are positive points now. These are no longer negatives. Ethel melts my heart. Food selections and customer service was top notch. Well, the foods were great. It was. Caramel apples with candy, oof. Actor timing on some of the scares was A+. Plus. And there were some of them that were good. There were, there, you know, we talked, you guys heard us talking about the negative stuff there. But there were some actors that would, like, pop out of this dark, this dark, like, opening and go, Hi! And it, it, it got a jump out of me. That's, that's good. Like, those, those were good. Most cue lines are, pro are marked properly. And I really appreciated this, especially considering there's multiple attractions. And the gift shop is really awesome. My MVA. My MVA for Q-Line Entertainment is Ethel. And my MVA for Actors in the House, I kept having these different uh, actors Pointing out I was wearing a uh, Pokemon sweater. I had Gengar on the front and Mistrevious on the back. One of the actors was actually kind of like messing with me a little bit. And I, I think it was when they were like spraying the water on us or whatever. She uh, she was like, oh, I see Mistrevious. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's that Pokemon's name. I forgot it was on the back of my sweater. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, check it out. Gengar's on here, too. And, of course, you know, they're hitting you with the water. And they're like, we just got your new sweater all wet. And they, like, started laughing about it. And I was just like, it was good. It was good interaction. So maybe not necessarily a scare, right? But the ability to not only talk to me but also stay in character, right? And stay in form was really good. And I liked that a lot. So those are my two uh, MBAs, Ethel, and then the, some of the girls uh, working in the in the last house. My MBA for Q, I would have to say the voice changer, gentlemen. It was, it was a refreshing change to hear a cool voice changer. I did enjoy that. I want to say... <laughs> I want to say I have an MVA for the house, like, in Haunt experience. I don't. That's okay. That's okay. And that's not because they're bad. It's because they didn't scare me. I, I couldn't have an interaction where I'm like, whoa, that was cool. You're awesome. And it, I, I couldn't because, like I said, oh, there's Lyle. Uh, I'm in front. They don't care about me. They care about the person behind me. And I'm like, oh, okay. Made eye contact. Oh, guess I'll keep going. I'm sure I'll get scared sooner or later. But because they did do a good job. I can hear them behind me. I'm sure they did a good job. If I was back there, I'd have an MVA. But I didn't. So I'm going to have to stick with my man, Front Phobia. Uh, he did a great job. I did like his uh, uniqueness with the voice changer. At the end of the day, Burial Chamber is an 86. It's a good haunt, and I it do is. and I do recommend Ruby. that you're able to go out there. Oh, yeah. That you're able to go out there and spend a night out with your friends or your crew. And I do actually think that. Hi, Ruby. Ruby came to say hi. 
Oh my gosh, well, we she is absolutely adorable. Yeah, she Come is. over there and pet the crap out of her. She's cute. Hi, Ruby. Oh, and there's there. Roxy, too. She's old. I can't pick her up. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It is a haunt that you can go through, and it is a haunt that you can spend quite a bit of time at, and the show is relatively solid. Again, there are some issues with conga lines. There may be Water some. Cold. There may Beautiful. be some issues with some of the actor lines. Hi, everybody. Some of the uh, some of the lines that oh. the actors use. Go on, pops. Uh, so that's something I would recommend that maybe they take a look at and maybe they refine a bit. But the actual show itself was good. I did actually enjoy my time there more than I thought I was going to. Uh, as as somebody who has had relatively mid experiences at burial chamber in the past i didn't have a lot to lot kind of making me say yeah i go i can't wait to get there this is gonna be a great time you know and i ended up really enjoying myself if you guys have been to burial chamber this season in 2024 let us know in the comments like the video if you enjoyed our no bs approach to haunted house reviews and make sure you're subscribed here to is it scary wisconsin for all of your honest haunted house reviews remember there's merch links in the description i'm justin my best friend gage thank you all so much for joining us and there's only one thing we want to know are you guys actually pissing in jars to make that smell i'm curious please comment that anyways is it scary wisconsin you tell us have a good night